Bam! Mr. Taru. Okay, we're going to take a look at some application problems in this video. Uh, those applications being linear velocity, angular velocity, and arc length. Before I get started though, I'm going to try to get four um, examples done in this video. Let me show you an example of how radian measures make some equations easier to work with. Now, arc length in geometry, when you're studying um, or using degrees, is the entire circumference of the circle, 2 pi r, times what percent the central angle inside the circle you're dealing with, what, how much rotation are you dealing with over 360. So 90 degrees would be 1 fourth of the circle, so you want 1 fourth of the entire circumference. Well, <clears throat> if I take out 360 degrees and replace it with its radian equivalent of 2 pi, look what happens. The 2 pi's cancel out, and you get a much simpler arc length formula of arc length is r theta. r theta. With the 2 pi put in there instead of degrees, uh, the majority of your equation appears to just cancel away. And so instead of a bunch of multiplications and division, you just simply got two numbers being multiplied together to find arc length. So just a little example how radians can make life a little easier than working with degrees. Linear velocity and angular velocity. So let's take my arm as like a spoke or a propeller blade or hey, you're watching the um, Rose Bowl parade. It's a big long line of people in the band. Now I'm going to rotate. Okay, I'm going to rotate 90 degrees. I'm going to point my hand right at the camera. So ready? One, two, three. So in three seconds my entire body made the same 90 degree movement. So every point on my body and along my arm rotated 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians in 3 seconds. However, the linear velocity is much different. My fingers here at my chest have a linear velocity of effectively zero, if I could put it dead center on the point of rotation, yet my fingertips are moving you know, quite fast in that 3 second period to get my hand to go from, uh, to travel that 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians. Uh, think of it as I'll always keep my, my, my keys on a lanyard. If I were to spin them, you know, the keys at the end of the lanyard going very, very quickly would start to whistle if I could spin it fast enough. And that linear, that linear velocity will pick up as you pull away from the center <clears throat> of rotation. So we have this standard formula in our textbook of V equals ST. Now S stands for arc length, so depending on how the numbers are given to you in the problem, you might see this as R theta over t, or you may want to think of it that way, uh, depending on the way the variables are given to you. However, uh, another form of linear velocity that my new book doesn't emphasize very much points out that theta over t is equal to angle velocity, or w. So another form of this equation is r, the radius, times the angle velocity of w, and this really emphasizes that your linear velocity is going to pick up the longer your radius is, the farther away you get from rotation. However, the angle velocity is not determined. I mean, the value of r, the radius length, has, is nowhere in that formula for angular velocity. So let's start with an easy question. I want the arc length of a circle with a radius equal to 10 and an angle measure, a central angle measurement of 225 degrees. So that is a, that is a diagram that's going to be a circle whose radius is 10 and you've marked off a total of 225 degrees. How much is this arc length here? Well, arc length needs to be done at least in its simplified form in radians. So S is equal to 10 times, well, I've got 225 degrees, and if I know my unit circle, I already know that that's uh, 5 pi over 4. But if you're not sure of that, then we can take this and multiply it by pi over 180 and, you know, just get that conversion done. So this is going to become S is 10 times 5 pi over 4, which is going to equal and I'm going to cheat and look over there at my decimal answer. 10 times, let's do this, 10 times 5 is 50 pi over 4. 
And I know that reduces to 25 over 2, but as a decimal, that's 39.3 units, whatever units I've got in my problem. And I just said 10, so you know, 10 inches, 10 feet, 10 miles, whatever. 39.3 uh, units would be the length of that arc. Okay, so that's how you find arc lengths. Just S times, or S equals R times theta. Linear velocity. So <clears throat> let's talk about the tip of a minute hand. That is eight centimeters long. You know, the long hand of a clock, the minute hand, the one that goes around um, a little bit quicker than the shorter hour hand. So what would be the, let's do actually, let's do both. Let's do the angular velocity of a minute hand. Well, how long does it take for a minute to go all the way around the clock? Well, from 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and back to 12 o'clock, that full rotation of 2 pi takes a total of, well, it's a minute hand, so it goes all the way around every hour or every 60 minutes. So the angular velocity of a minute hand, based on, let's, we're going to do this uh, by minute, not by hour, is pi over th uh, 30 radians per minute. Yes. Okay, I'm just <laughs> spacing out there a little bit. Now, what's the linear velocity of that minute hand that takes an hour to go around the clock? Well, linear velocity uh, can be found by taking arc length and divided by time, r times theta divided by time, or if you've already figured out angular velocity, r times w. So the minute hand has a radius of 8, and every minute, that minute hand is moving pi over 30 radians. So 8, the radius, times w, the angular velocity. And a lot of times with linear velocity, I do prefer to have the angular velocity first. That's going to be 8 pi over 30, or, let's see, divide that by what? 2, 4 fifteenths, 4 pi. 15. Now this is a linear velocity. It's how far the tip is moved. So it's going to be 4 pi 15 centimeters per second. Not radians per uh, minute, excuse me. Not radians per minute, but centimeters per second, uh, per minute, excuse me. So a rotation or a distance. Rotation is what angular velocity is about. A distance traveled over time is what uh, linear velocity is about. All right, so that's angle velocity and linear velocity for the tip of a minute hand on a clock. Okay. Let's say that we're talking about the spokes of a wheel, like a bicycle tire, bicycle wheel, or maybe you got a car with spoked wheels, um, and we have a wheel with a diameter of 26 inches spinning at 200 revolutions per minute, or RPM. So <clears throat> I'm going to do the same thing where we find the angle velocity first and then find the linear velocity. So we have this wheel, and it doesn't matter how big or small it is, the wheel is turning uh, 200 revolutions a minute. Well, angle velocity is not about revolutions per minute. It's at about an angle measure, and usually we're talking about radians over a given period of time. So each revolution of 200, where there are 200 revolutions, each one of those revolutions, a full revolution in radians, is going to be 2 pi, or 360 degrees, but I'm doing these in radians since we're just learning those and we're not very comfortable with them. So 200 times 2 pi is 400 pi radians, uh, well, I forgot about the time period. It's 200 revolutions per minute, so I could keep it in terms of a minute and say that it is uh, 400 pi radians per minute, or if I would like, I'm going to break it down into seconds and say that it's 
this many radians, and there's 60 seconds in a minute. So break that down. And this brings up another topic is you can let's see the zeros cancel out. Let's uh, get the answers before I uh, talk too much and make a mistake here. You know, you can set your angular velocity. It's going to be about what the time period is, what the time period is wanted in the problem. Do you want it uh, uh, angle velocity per hour, per minute, per second? That's going to change your answer. So make sure that you, uh, and I didn't really, this is just uh, sort of uh, not completely off the top of my head, but I just slapped this down here and I did not put anything in the problem about what time period I want to set these up with. So we're going to do per second. So we have an angle velocity per second based on the fact that we're rotating 200 times, 200 times each one being 2 pi radians, uh, and it's given per minute, but we're going to break it down by seconds. So I'm going to divide those by, uh, well, instead of one a minute, by 60 seconds. Okay, so we have an angle velocity of radians per second, 20 pi over 3 radians per second. Let's find out how far a tip of a spoke on that wheel is going to travel over that one second period. Well, linear velocity, if we already have angular velocity, is r, the radius. Well, if the diameter is 26, the radius is going to be 13. So we have r, w. We already have w worked out. So it's the radius, half the diameter, times the angular velocity of 20 pi over 3 radians per second. So we're going to have a linear velocity per second. How many inches the tip of that spoke on the outside of the wheel travels in a one second period. So that's going to be, um, did I work this out as a decimal? Yep. So 13 times 20 divided by 3 and then multiply that by pi comes out to be 272.3 inches per second which is a pretty good distance over a one second period. But then 200 revolutions a minute is pretty quick. So angular and linear velocity of a wheel. And again, remember, angular velocity, here's you know pi over 2 radians or 90 degrees in a given period of time. My whole body is turning at that same rate. But my actual fingertip is moving much farther than my chest. So my, the tip of my finger is going to have a higher linear velocity. The more uh, farther away from the point of rotation, the faster the linear velocity will get. Okay, one more example, if I have time, which I don't, so I won't. I've only got two minutes left. Uh, so that's a couple of examples of setting up linear velocity, angular velocity, and arc length. Thank you very much. Bam!